at the Indianapolis Convention Center. On Monday, you may have heard, bishops voted to approve an official prayer that blesses same-sex unions. And here to talk more about the decision is Steve Carlson. He's the dean at uh, Christ Church Cathedral here in Indianapolis. This is a, the first time that we have a service that, w that can be done in all Episcopal churches across the country and, and in some places around the world where if a couple comes together seeking God's blessing, a same-sex couple, uh, with the permission of the bis bishop, we can bless their union as they begin their life together. I had seen the, the spokesperson for the Episcopal Church had said this was a theological response to a monogamous relationship. Right. This is one of those things that you guys have been working on for a very long time. This is not the first time that the Episcopal Church has made a decision that would support uh, the same-sex unions. That's right. It's been a conversation among our denomination. We've been talking about how we include everyone. We believe that Christ calls and welcomes everyone. And so we've been doing that for who can be leader. We've done that so who can be a priest, who can be a bishop. And now we're talking about how we bless people who make this significant lifelong commitment together. And we want to do it for everyone, not just for the straight people, but for our gay and lesbian members as well. Something that I think is can, can be a problem when you have a huge organization of any kind, whether it's a business or a church, uh, making a decision for the whole. The problem can be the implementation of that, but you said that, that the, impl the implementation has not been forced on anyone. You guys are making the decision parish by parish. That's right. No, in fact, it's written into the resolution that no one can be forced to do this. It's up to people to follow their, their conscience, the dictates of their conscience, and do what they feel led to do. So this is something that people are allowed to do. It's not something that people are going to be forced on anyone. And, and you're going to talk with your own congregation about it, right? Yes, we knew this was coming up at this convention, and as we were looking forward to the issues and no hosting, there'd be some notoriety about it, uh, we said it's time for us to have this conversation among our gay members, among our straight members, and, and see what we feel called to do in this instance. Okay, Steve Carlson, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. I know many of you are Christians, so I'm going to ask you to do the Christian thing and respect your neighbors just for a few moments. But at its heart, it's as simple as it is profound. These loving couples are here to celebrate and to consecrate a spiritual union. And it's by their love and the love of their higher power that they will be united here today. There are couples here today who have already lived as committed partners for years. And there are other couples who have only just found each other. But they're all loving couples. You will each exchange your own special vows, unique to your lives and the future that you pledge to each other. But for now, if you have rings, please take them out. And as you exchange the rings, I will pronounce you partners. In 2003, when the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts mandated same-sex marriage, there was no way to know the full impact of that decision. But today, more than eight years later, there is clear evidence showing the problems associated with same-sex marriage. From kindergarten through 12th grade and beyond, our children are being indoctrinated on same-sex marriage and the rightness, the correctness of homosexuality. The beginning of 2005, our son Jacob was going into kindergarten and he came home with a diversity book bag. And in the diversity book bag was a book entitled Who's in a Family by Robert Scutch. And that introduces children to same-sex households. Back in March of this year, our son came home Friday afternoon and bounded in the front door and said, Mom, Dad, guess what? Our teacher read us the funniest book. It was so silly. It was about a prince who was getting married, but he didn't marry a princess. He married a prince. That afternoon, we sent the teacher an email message. The teacher called back and said that, yes, it was a book about two princes who got married. King and King... It's a story that introduces the idea of men having a romantic relationship and getting married. Mm. We were shocked. When we went into the school, what we requested is parental notification when these issues are brought up by adults within the school and the option to opt our child out of this type of indoctrination. And then uh, she said, well, 
she she had checked with the administrators and had and they had said that this was not a parental notification issue. One of the reasons they give is they said same-sex marriage is legal in Massachusetts. Therefore, we can broach it any time with your child. So when she would not um, acknowledge our parental rights in this area, we then went to our Judeo-Christian beliefs and our, our faith and said, well, you wish to affirm homosexuality um, to our son, you're presenting that which is sin as though it is not to our son, and we cannot allow that. To make a, a long story short, the accommodation they gave was to put me in handcuffs and send me to jail. And they were willing to handcuff a father and send him to jail. Um, it was a six by eight cell, uh, filthy. Um, but, you know, I felt I didn't have a choice at that point in order to fulfill my role and duty as a father. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God, and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the Spirit. Even now that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is gone because uh, they're not able to uh, commit themselves in a marriage. Uh, at a certain point, I've just concluded that um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them.